Good evening, uh, welcome to my channel. Uh, I am back today to talk to you about a subject which is dear to my heart and every other writer's heart probably, which is how to balance your creativity with all the other demands that life throws at you. So I've kind of come up with a few notes, um, five pieces of would be helpful. Um, and I just thought I would have a chat about how I do it and how others can do it. Um, and obviously, it differs from person to person. So let me just get my notes so I can make sure I cover everything. So um, the first thing I should say is quite easy for me to balance my um, creative writing with the rest of my life because I'm not married, I don't have kids. So those are two large, obviously time consuming parts, aspects of life that will make it harder to fit the writing in. Not impossible, as we'll discuss, but harder. So. That's true. I don't have those constraints. So for me, it is quite easy for me to balance doing as much creative writing as I can with the other demands that I have. However, I do write for a living. I'm a content and copywriter as my day job. So I draw upon the same wellspring, you know, the same source to come up with the words for my paid work as I do for my short stories, screenplays, novels and non-fiction. So this can be something of a problem because it's as if I'm overtraining those or overusing those muscles. I, you know, I can get creative fatigue. If I spend all day writing two and a half thousand words about, I don't know, dental implants or um, software as a surface service, then um, the last thing I want to do is sit down and write another 1500 words of a short story or a novel. So how I balance the the paid work and the creative work, which I hope will also one day be paid, um, is challenging. So I would suggest if I was going to give one piece of advice to anyone um, who wants to maximise their creative energy, I would say don't work as a writer. Don't work professionally as a writer if you can avoid it. If there's any other skills you have, any other abilities that you can utilise to have a successful and meaningful career, do that and then save that part of your brain that comes up with narrative for your creative work. If you do work, um, if you have a nine to five or you know some other schedule, but a regular schedule, then you have to fit in the writing around it. And I did obviously have a day, to, a day job before I went um, freelance. Um, and so I found places to write and times to write uh, and everyone else, you know, can, if, if the motivation is there to tell stories and, you know, write novels or whatever form of your creativity takes, then you will find the time. If you're an early riser, you might find that a session before work every day, even if it's only an hour, is very productive. Your brain tends to be quite well rested after sleep. And, um, you know, a lot of people are, you know, do all their best work in the earliest hours of the day. So before work could be an option. Um, you could do what I did when I had a full-time job in the National Health Service, which was to write at lunchtime. So I would go to the staff um, sort of restroom, what was it called, not restroom, sort of break room where those little microwaves and fridges and things. And I would get my um, little uh, Microsoft Surface uh, or other laptops are available. And I would bang out, you know, as many words as I could whilst eating with one hand, any, whatever was in my uh, Tupperware that day. Um, so yeah, I would fit in my creative writing into that one hour lunchtime. That meant I had to be very focused. There was no time for social media. There was no time for making calls or any other sort of thing. If somebody phoned me, I would just not answer unless it obviously was an emergency or an important call that I knew was coming in. I would definitely make sure I wrote, I'd probably write about a page, maybe a page and a half, two pages, um, if it was going well. And I wouldn't stop to finesse it, just bang out the words. That's a very rough first draft. It has to be written. And later on, I'll go through again and again and improve it. Some people find the little gap between returning from work uh, and having dinner, if you eat, you know, at 8, 7, 30, 8 o'clock, you might have an hour, maybe even two hours, depending on how far you live from work. Um, to fit in a bit of writing. And then, of course, 
the, there are night owls, people who love staying up late, and the possibility of eschewing Netflix for one night and spending some time writing in the evening. That I would find a challenge because my brain is not really up for much complex creative work uh, in the evening. But some people find it very productive. And on the whole, novelists particularly don't stop when they get married and have kids. They keep going. They work. So they must find a way to fit it in. Um, so when the kids are at school, uh, nursery, whatever, when they're asleep, um, on the few, time, few hours when infants are asleep, um, they will grab some moments to do a bit of writing. Um, however, this links into my second piece of advice. Don't beat yourself up about word count or the amount of hours you've devoted to writing that week. You know, you can have a target, but if you don't hit that target, don't agonise over it. Uh, there are some days you're just not going to be able to do very much. Um, other days will be very productive. So as long as you do fill those gaps, uh, for the most part, with writing, you've done well. Now, working from home, people who work from home, it's becoming increasingly popular that people either are remote workers or hybrid workers. If you're in, you know, white, what they call white collar work in America, office work. Um, there are certain things that you can do to make it easier for you to work from home and not be distracted. Um, you need to make a separation between your paid work and your creative work. And I think it helps to have a physical separation. So literally a different room to do the creative work in or a different chair, a different desk even, or even a different computer. Like sometimes I have a PC that I use for film editing and complicated work. And then I have this thing, which I can take anywhere with me and just pop it out on the desk or sit and write on, I've written on trains and buses and things um, with this. So having a physical separation in terms of where and how you work between the creative stuff and everything else you have to do can be very helpful. Another thing that can be very helpful is to get out, just, you know, because it can be stifling and a little bit isolating and claustrophobic to be spending all your time in your house or flat um, doing your work and writing. So sometimes it, you know, it can be good to just go to a cafe or even a bar, you know, don't drink too much. Um, places like bookshops are good. Um, and galleries and theatres, um, rather than, you know, explicit eating to places where people go to have lunch, because that can be a problem, obviously. They don't want you hanging around with a laptop and nursing a coffee when they have paying lunch patrons. But some places, like, as I say, bookshops, galleries, um, they're better. They don't tend to have such a massive lunchtime trade. Or you just go before lunch and finish at lunch, or you go after lunch. Um, but find a little time now and again. It doesn't need to be very often because obviously it's expensive if you're buying coffees and snacks and things. But maybe once a week, um, get, get out. You also get a different perspective. You can observe people in the real world. You can watch, see someone that might become a character. You know, maybe observe the way someone's dressed, the way someone speaks, life passing on the street. You may you may get ideas that you wouldn't have got sitting at home staring at your computer. Um, so that's advice piece number three, vary your environment or vary your genre or vary the media in which you write. Um, what I mean by genre and media, so if you're writing a novel and it's a, say a crime novel uh, and you're having trouble getting through, you feel a little bit of writer's block, which I'll come on to, Try something else. Write a funny short story. Write a little satirical piece. Write about how annoying it is trying to solve this character dilemma. Um, record a video. Um, record a sound clip. Uh, do a painting if you if you're you know physically artistic. Just try something else. Um, this will make sure that you've always got a pipeline of creativity going, and things filter into each other. The only reason I'm now designing a board game with my cousin. I think it's because um, I started opening up the possibility of different kinds of narrative, including games and game books and things like that. And that led me to think, well, maybe I could just design a game. So partly why I do these videos is um, 
to vary things up, you know, just to give me a, a creative outlet, a ex form of expression that's not just writing, typing away. Um, another reason why I do these videos is that um, I find out how my stories read, and that can be extremely useful. Um, it makes you understand where you might send them, if they come across as literary or comedic or atmospheric, you might think, well, that's, this is sounding like the kind of story that X magazine or X competition would like. Um, my fourth piece of advice uh, is actually don't be precious about your work. Don't just finish things. <laughs> I have a friend, very talented writer, and she, by her own admission, very rarely finishes a story. She's tinkers, tinkers and tinkers and tinkers over years. And they're beautiful things when they're finished, but they're not finished very often. So it, it's difficult to build up a momentum as a writer if you're not finishing things. It will never be finished. It's never going to be perfect. You'll, years later, you'll see it in book form and you'll say, you'll, oh, that sentence, that, well, that's a cliche. Why did I put that in? And that's just the way art is. That's the way artists are, restless and never happy. Um, show it to other people. Um, people you trust, friends, family. You know, people who give you honest but generous advice. And submit it to magazines and competitions. Now, I don't have much to say about competitions because I've sort of avoided them. Partly because they're very expensive, partly because the competition, within the competition, as it were, the number of other writers submitting um, is huge. And partly because uh, it takes the story out of circulation. But... I have been entering these ones that are based on challenges because they're fun and they stimulate stories that I can use elsewhere. So anyway, do something like that. You know, that will just open the floodgates to new ideas, new creativity, I think. And it gives you hope that your stories are out there in the, in the world. Somebody might read them, somebody might enjoy them, somebody might want to publish them. Treat your creative work as a job as well. Um, so systematize it. I think I've talked about this in a previous video, which I might link to. Um, I have a spreadsheet where I put all the stories that I've sent out to various magazines at various times, by which media, how many times they've been rejected, that sort of thing. Um, the business side of story of creativity, you know, the organizational side can't be neglected too much. Um, it was one of those systems that actually led to one of my most productive periods. I think it was after leaving one job and starting another, I had a few weeks. So I decided to spend that time writing screenplays, which I hadn't done for a while. So in that summer, I think it was about four or five years ago now, um, I actually wrote three full end screenplays. And the reason I, and the way I did it was they were all in different genres. So that's leading back to what I said about mixing up genre. One was a horror story. Um, one was a sort of buddy comedy. And the other one was a psychological thriller. And I set myself a word target each day and tried to hit it or exceed it. And it was only a page target, so like two pages of this one, five pages of that one, one page of that one. And I generally succeeded. Or if I didn't do five pages of one, I might find I'm feeling more inclined to write one of the other ones. And I sort of bounced them off against each other. So if I got bored of trying to come up with amusing lines for the comedic one, I would sort of go to the horror one as a kind of release and it worked I got three screenplays out of it um, and yes I still have to polish them even more and start sending them out again but they're there <laughs> they're in the drawer for some future point um, the other and another thing I did was I set a thousand word limit initially when I started writing short stories which meant that they never got too long obviously they never took too long to write they were easy to rewrite, um, they were quick to read, and there were a lot of maximise the number of magazines that would accept them. So sometimes setting a limit or setting some sort of control over how the project sprawls will help you be more productive. And my last piece of advice is a slightly controversial one, which is that writer's block is an illusion. What writer's block is, is really procrastination in disguise, I think. Um, you may disagree and you're welcome to make a comment and tell me I'm an idiot. <laughs> but if you're feeling blocked, it's possibly because you're just resistant to working on it because it's going to be difficult. It's going to be painful staring at that screen and trying to make something come. But there are ways around it. You can use 
random prompts, use randomness. I've got another chapter about that, uh, another um, video about how I use randomness to generate story ideas. You can start on another thing, um, write a poem, um, you know, just write something else. Um, maybe re revise an old story. I just start. I mean, <laughs> it is possible just to stare at the thing and just type a sentence, any sentence. Just type something, see where it goes. Um, but I think the writer's block thing is resistance because you, when you know you have a real difficult problem to solve in your story, in your narrative, in your structure, and you're just not willing to do that work for whatever reason. There are days when you're not going to feel like it and you just have to take a day off. That's fine. But constantly, but just falling back on, oh, I've got writer's block, I can't, I can't work, I've got writer's block this month. No. You can, you can write, you can be writing something. Um, so, I'll, yeah, I'll be a bit of a hard taskmaster. I can't even say it, let alone be it, a hard taskmaster. Um, where I looking over other writers' shoulders. So those are my thoughts on balancing writing and the demands of the rest of your life um, and how to be maximally productive. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it helpful and you're welcome to leave comments and remember to subscribe if you haven't done so already. I should say that at the beginning of the video. Maybe I'll try, try and do that from now on. Um, and I'll be back with another short story, no doubt, very soon. Bye-bye.